Tomorrow's Torah portion is the Akedat Yitzchak, the Binding of Isaac. And this is a retelling of that extraordinarily difficult story. This retelling that I'm about to present to you borrows images and phrases from other Bible stories. It draws from ancient Midrash. It benefits from some of your own comments that I've heard from you during our classes together. And it is enhanced, I hope, by my own imagination as well. Although this retelling of the Binding of Isaac story from Genesis is imaginative, it is serious. And the facts about the birds and the bees, mountains and rivers, oceans and illnesses are not fanciful. That's all real. And so, after these things, God put Abraham to the test. Abraham, God called, Avraham. Abraham said, Hineni, here I am. Take your son, your only one, the one you love, Isaac, and go to the land of Moriah and offer him there as a burnt offering, as a sacrifice. But Isaac is a child, Abraham said. Would the righteous judge of all the earth have me harm one who is innocent? God said, Abraham, where were you when I created the universe? Where were you when I set the stars in their circuits, cleaved valleys, and formed mountains? I am God. I know, Abraham, what you cannot know. So take him. Take Isaac, your only son, the one you love. But he's not my only son, God. I have another son, Yishmael, and I love him too. God said, just as you, Avraham, father of multitudes, represents all parents, Isaac, Yitzchak, one who plays and laughs, represents all children. Take him. Abraham froze. He was petrified. And he did not follow God's instructions immediately. Instead, he went to bed. He, led, he lay next to Sarah, his wife, and he was wide awake. He couldn't sleep at all, all through the night. And finally, he got up. Why stay in bed? It was very early in the morning. The sun was just rising. Abraham looked to the sky. He, might, he may not know what God knows, but he knew God, and there was no escaping this command. Ein brera, he said to the sky. No choice. So Abraham collected wood for the burnt offering, charcoal, lighter fluid, and other tools, and lo loaded it all into his, ha his Honda Odyssey. <clears throat> he affectionately called it the guzzler. He had considered purchasing a car that got better gas mileage, an electric vehicle or a hybrid perhaps, but fuel efficient cars are a little more expensive. Abraham could definitely afford it, but still, why bother? Isaac had woken up and he was laughing and skipping around and playing around the guzzler. And finally, Abraham tossed in one last tool, a drill, into the minivan, thinking it might be useful for building an altar. Isaac hopped into the passenger seat, and the two of them began their drive together. After a while, Abraham stopped for gas. More than four bucks a gallon? Still, in Brera. What choice did he had? He filled it up. Abraham wiped sweat from his brow. It was very hot. Another record-breaking season for temperatures. He squinted toward the sun and he saw sunspots. His vision became blurry. His expression turned strange. Abraham felt woozy. 
He understood this feeling. He had had this feeling before. He was receiving a vision, a prophetic vision from God. And it was like a movie in the sky. And first Abraham saw the earth, our earth, our blue planet spinning noiselessly on its axis against an infinite black plane. And then the vision zoomed in and Abraham saw the earth up close. He saw what was happening on this planet. He saw what most do not really see. And he heard a plaintive falsetto singing in the sky. Look at mother nature on the run in the 21st century. Abraham did look and what did he see? He saw massive hurricanes and was terrified by their power. He saw homes uninsured and they were all splintered. He saw rivers overflowing and houses were flooded. He saw dinosaur machinery tearing at the earth. He saw TNT blasting the tops off of mountains. The detritus of those blasts clogged rivers below. He saw streams of poison rush into the ocean. He saw oceans swelling and islands submerging and islands of plastic floating upon the oceans. The North Atlantic garbage patch hundreds of miles across the great Pacific garbage pat patch twice the size of Texas. He saw 3 billion birds erased from the skies, 3 billion birds gone in just 50 years. And then Abraham, father of multitudes, saw little children, innocent children. He saw them and heard them coughing and wheezing children of the poor breathing in an air unfit for a house plant. Children malnourished from so many droughts. Behold, <clears throat> Abraham saw parents fearful and desperate, rushing their children away from their villages where battles were fought over water and oil. <clears throat> the families, they hurried to turbulent waters. He saw boats, they were crammed with desperate migrants. And Abraham, father of multitudes, saw many children. They screamed as the waves hurled them into the waters. Then they floated face down and washed up on strange beaches. And in cities and suburbs, Abraham saw other children, their small bodies poisoned by microplastics, 75,000 microplastics each year into every human body from plastic bottles and bags, toiletry and clothing. And then Abraham saw massive walls of fire, 100, 200, 300 feet high, rapidly engulfing a town called Paradise, California. Another wall of fire destroying the paradise of Maui. He saw the Euphrates River, which watered the paradise of Eden, now dried up so much you can walk right across it. Abraham then remembered, he used to play in the Euphrates. It was so close to where he was born. His old eyes filled with tears and everything became blurry again and the vision ended. And then Abraham returned the gas pump to its cradle and he got back into the car. He looked at Isaac, pressed the ignition and continued driving. And after a while, Isaac said, Avi, my father. And Abraham said, he named even he. I am here, my son. And Isaac said, I see the wood for the burnt offering and the lighter fluid and the drill and whatnot. But where's the lamb for the burnt offering? What are we sacrificing? What do parents tell children when they can't tell the truth? Abraham said, the Lord will see to the sacrifice, my son. He hoped that would be good enough. But Isaac said, I don't get that. 
by Edom Abraham. And Abraham was silent. He said nothing more. They finally reached Mount Moriah. Abraham began to unload the gear, the coal, lighter fluid, drill, knife, at last the wood, the wood that he would use to build the altar itself. Here, he said, placing it upon the shoulders of Isaac. Abraham said, I know it's heavy. Put it over there. Isaac stumbled as he walked. And then Abraham set to building the altar. And he heard a strange voice. It was almost a mocking voice. Build, A.B., build. Drill, A.B., drill. Abraham turned sharply to the sky. This child is innocent. Do not make me do this. But Abraham, it was now God speaking. You've been building this altar for years. You've already done it, Abraham. It's not me. It's you. Nonsense, said Abraham. You, God said, and all other fathers and mothers. That's absurd, cried Abraham. But he was feeling less sure of himself. This altar, Abraham, said God. This altar is an altar to your unwillingness to be responsible for this earth. It is an altar to caring more about your comfort than for your children's welfare, their future. It's an altar to your incessant consumption of meat, a sin, an environmental scourge. It's an altar to your stubborn, slavish addiction to plastics. This is an altar to just not caring, to not giving a... This is an altar to ignoring science, to not heeding warnings of experts. Abraham hung his head. So, God continued, build that altar, make way, make way, prepare ye a way for the altar, clear a forest to make room for it, hire a lawn service that uses God knows what to keep the grass around it thick and green, build it. God's voice was angry and weary and then silent. And the only sound heard atop Mount Moriah was the guzzler the minivan, Abraham had left the engine idling. With heavy steps, he walked to it, reached inside, cut the engine, and there was silence. No bird chirped, no wolf howled, the wind ceased, the sun stood still. And the Lord said to Abraham, Bind thy child. And Abraham did so. He tied a rope around Isaac. He lifted him. He lay his son upon the altar. Isaac looked up at him. You are a man. You understand. You pick me up and you lay me down again. Abraham looked away. Tears filled his eyes. And God said, the knife. So Abraham reached out and took hold of the knife, and he raised the knife over his son, and Abraham wept. He wept a flood of tears so copious and bitter that they splashed upon Isaac's face and stung the boy's eyes. And then Abraham tightened his grip. He drew the knife toward Isaac's neck, closer closer. And then a voice rings out in the wilderness, a woman's voice. It was weeping for this child, for her children, for all children of every generation. Abraham, Abraham, Hineni, yes, here I am. Do not lay your hand upon that boy. Do nothing to him. Have you not done enough already? Yes, Abraham cried. Oh, what have I done? And he continued weeping, and the angel said, Abraham, Hayom Harat Olam. Today the world is born. It is Rosh Hashanah. Indeed, the world is reborn, said the angel, every day. And so are you, Abraham. That which you did yesterday, you may do differently tomorrow. 
And then the angel said, look up, Abraham, and behold, another vision. What did Abraham see? The future. The blue planet spinning against infinite darkness, and then the vision zoomed in. And the vision was really a prayer. Abraham saw majestic mountains, and they were whole. Abraham heard bird songs and the beating of wings, and he saw billions of birds in the skies. And Abraham saw rivers, and they flowed full and clean, and salmon runs, and they were lively and plentiful, and butterflies and bees, pollinators, and they were abundant, and plastic islands disappeared, and plastic bags were outlawed. Temperatures moderated, the seas subsided, glaciers held fast to their cliffs and the air was clean, and the rains were right, and children, children once wheezing and sick, were now laughing and healthy, and children, children once displaced and hungry, were now happy and home. Then Abraham looked toward the thicket, and he saw, no, not a ram for sacrifice, for why kill an animal unnecessarily? Rather, in the tangled thicket, he saw another vision, windmills, thousands of them spinning gracefully, solar panels, millions of them absorbing the light. God placed all of this before Abraham, father of multitudes, and God said, Abraham, Abraham. Yes, Lord. And God said, take your son whom you love. And Abraham turned towards Isaac and he lifted him from the altar he unbound him, and Abraham, repentant, completely repentant, fell to his knees and embraced Isaac. And the heart of the father turned toward the son, and the heart of the son turned toward his father. And the world was whole, and creation complete, and father and son walked from the mountain together and it was very good. Lishanat Tovah.